Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now uh, today we're in the workshop. Um, I've done one of these for a while, but um, got sort of sidetracked onto onto sort of doing reviews and all that sort of thing, which uh, obviously enjoy doing. But um, yeah, um, thought I'd do another workshop video. Um, so I'm just have a quick look at what's in the workshop at the moment. But I'm going to actually um, well, I'll just turn the camera around first before I start talking about what we're going to do. So in the workshop at the moment, we've got a. Project RPM6, which is up on one channel. Uh, planar, it's a partly disassembled planar, uh, oh, sorry, RP6, so it's an earlier an earlier 6, not, not the planar 6, which is off on one channel. And our sun deck, complete with its Lingo and Kern preamp, because this was really low volume, it was hardly, hardly any sound coming out of it, um, which I thought might have been a connection issue, but it, as it turned out, it was. But uh, all it was in the end, it was, I, I kind of suspected the preamp. Um, but as it turned out in the end, the cartridge was, was faulty, so I've replaced, we've replaced the cartridge with probably a bit of a controversial one, but it works really well. I put a, an Anya into um, into into the Keto arm and a Sunday. It, it's a fabulous sounding combination. Does 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 suit it. Um, that little beep noise was um, one of the uh, a video exposure and um, regrowth it video finishing. Just just been uploading, so uh, that should be showing tonight. Sorry, I'm going off there. Just to explain what the beat was. Um, so yeah, so that's that's all sorted. Um, the project is probably internal arm wiring because that's not that unusual with them really. Um, it seems to be fairly fragile. Um, the Riga, this is really, this is quite an unusual one. I've, um, I've already started this um, completely dead on one channel. I've already removed the cartridge because I sort of suspected it could have been a cartridge issue, but the cartridge is fine. Um, buzzed it through with a meter on the tag, checked it. What you should always do is check these tags are actually um, properly attached. So the first thing you do, check cartridge, have a look at, <coughs> have a look at your tags, make sure they're attached to the cartridge firstly, but then also make sure that the wires are attached to the tag. There's no dry jointing or, you know, sometimes you can just give them a little touch like that, just make sure they're sitting there really firmly. If, if all that is right, then there's something going on either internally on the arm or in the actual cable itself. Second thing to check is, and I'll put the camera down to do this, is to just check inside these plugs because that quite often they seem to break at this point. It's not particular particular to Riga, but it's um, that's where a lot of the stresses are. So it's quite often that's the, uh, the next place to look is, is within the plug. So I'll, I'll reposition the camera and we'll just have a look in there. Okay, so these just just on screw, sort of a backwards thread. And when you have a look at the connection point here, and just if you just sort of manipulate the plug around a little bit like that, and just see, make sure it's not separating from the from the wire at this end, which it is. It's all nicely, nice and firmly attached. That so that seems to be fine. And same on the other one. Nice and firm there, nice and firm there. Make sure it's don't but I wouldn't put too much pressure on because you'll actually probably break break the, the connection, but usually it's this connection here that breaks. So you'd have to pull back the the uh, heat shrink a little bit and just check as it's firm. So yeah, everything's fine here, so that means it's further down this cable or it's within the arm. And it's really unusual for it to be within the arm on a Riga. They're they're very robust tone arms, so um Next thing we need to do is isolate where it is within within the sort of signal path, um, and for that I will take off the I'll take the tone arm off I think because that's the easiest way to do it really. Okay, let's uh, let's do that. Okay, I'm going to attempt to take the take off the tone arm um, whilst filming at the same time, which could be interesting. Um, this has got an RB. 303 it might be, because I have a C30 or a 303, or 303 because it's got the adjustable bias like that. Um, so it's a three point mount, there's three three screws under here. Um, so we just loosen those off. I've already taken, there is a, a retaining strap underneath, it's like a, a, you know, it's just to stop people yanking the cable. Uh, I've already taken that off. Um, so basically just going to unscrew the tone arm and uh, see how that goes. So we can do it without knocking the camera over. So. 
crosshead on it. They, they vary a little bit. Some are crosshead, some are torx on the later decks. So it's just basically screw straight into the straight into the um, plinth. I have to move the tar. This is where I'm so I might knock the camera over. Just to move the arm around until you find, I can, can actually see the screw. So it's actually quite unusual to um, to have a fault on a, on a rigatone arm. The the ones that do have problems are very very early R two hundred the sil the, the S shaped silver arms, which unfortunately if you get to this point and you've done all these checks and it's a, and it's a fault within the tone arm or it's a fault within the cable, you kind of a bit stuck really because the, you can't get the external leads for them anymore and it's a it's a it's a unique fitting underneath. Uh, and the R two hundred wasn't made by Riga. So they, I mean, Riga are very, very good at keeping parts for things, but actually they didn't, didn't actually make that tone arm, so they've not really got access to parts. So um, you are a bit stuck. So your, your option with that is to swap the arm, really. So that should be us now. Yep. So that's that. So I'll, um, I need to lift the deck up. So I'll stop the camera and uh, let's have a look at the wiring. Okay, what I'm going to do is just going to check continuity from one end to the other. So in theory now, it should be okay on three three out of four of the, um, the connections. Um, so what I'll do, if I put onto, that should be the red. So that's your right, right positive. My very weary sounding continuity tester. So I got an, yeah, right negative. Yeah, basically because I'm not pressing very hard on the connections. It's but as long as you get if you get a sound out there, the signal going through. So I'm, th I'm thinking that this should be yeah, we're dead on the dead on left, left positive. And the question is whether it's within the tone arm or whether it's within the cable. Um, quite often, um, with the record players, it can be. In this part here, can they, they can break just just after the plug, um, and you, I don't think it is on this to be honest. Because usually, what what tends to happen is the um, as you t if you t sort of manipulate like this, the channel will come back on, back on and go off and crackle and buzz and do all sorts of things. But these aren't doing this. This doesn't seem to make any difference to it, to it at all. So I don't think it is there in there. It's feeling a little bit like it's with it, somewhere else within the cable. It, may, it might have been. Um, snagged or something, or it's within the tone arm, which is actually very unusual with the Rigas. They don't, um, they don't tend to have. Uh, so what we need to do, um, we've established that there is a there is a break somewhere between here and here. What we need to find out is whether it's in the tone arm or whether it's in the cable. If it's in the cable, then that's a fairly straightforward job. So um, let's have a look at that thing to do. It's to re remove the cable from the base of the arm. Now these aren't the same. If you've ever had a lint turntable or well, pretty much anything SMEs, usually you just loosen off, loosen off a little grub screw, which is like we've got here. I can actually do it without actually being able to see it. Where is it? Let's turn that around a bit. <laughs> Get in there. Get where it. So just loosen that off. Yeah, on Lin, Lin's and SMEs, you'd loosen this off and then you just pull the plug, it's just a plug and socket and you just pull the plug out. Sometimes they don't notice that quite often they're not even tightened down. Um, but this is a bit different because this is actually, as you'll see, you have to be very careful pulling these out that you don't snatch it out. It's actually, it's actually soldered to the bottom. Uh, the benefit of that is that there's less connection, so it's going straight to the tone arm wiring. Uh, there's no you're not soldering to to a plug which is then a connection to a socket which is then soldered to the internal wiring so that's which will be three connections this is just one connection so it is far far better than for that reason um if you're wondering why the internal cables are so thin on these it's because it you don't want heavy gauge cable running through a tone arm i mean i've seen upgrade kits you can get for these um and the cables are you know much thicker than this and you've got to it's a bit of a trade-off because you need the best possible 
cable you can get in there, okay, you do, yeah, it makes a difference. But if it's impeding the movement of the tone arm, that's much a much bigger deg uh, degradation to the sound quality. If the, to if the tone arm itself isn't free and you know able to move without resistance, um, that makes a that really affects the sound quality. So quite fine cabling. Uh, it's a compromise, but that's what it needs to be. So. Um, a, lot, a lot of the upgrade kit stuff, so well, a lot of upgraded tone arms I've seen is we've got, we've got the heavier cables. It tends to make them tends to make them unreliable as well, to be honest. I think um, I think the thicker cable tends to suffer from stress fracture a lot more than, than things like these do. Now I'll just reposition the camera because I'll need to clamp this so it's not going to because if it snatches, it, you can actually pull pull out. So I'll just stop stop for a second. I'll find a way of clamping it. Okay, with the combination. Um, resting on here and being clamped in here we seem to have things seem to be stable so uh, w what I should make is, is I should make myself a little jig to do this because it's it isn't that infrequent like I do things in this sort of job um, what, what you, you don't want is this moving or that moving posing and ripping it because it's very 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 fine contacts on here and very easy just to completely rip out uh, so what we want to check is from the tag end, I'm not sure, now I've positioned the camera, I'm not even sure I can reach it, but let's just see if I can do this. Um, so we're going to check the toe, it's not in the toe now, so red positive, so we've got a right, I should be able to get to the red connection. Yep, I don't know why I'm checking all of them, because we know that the faulty one is left positive, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, green is down here somewhere, yep, that seems okay. Blue, which is your left negative yeah so if this if we get a beep here then we know the tone arm itself is okay which is kind of my guess because like it's it looks like it's unusual for eager tone arms to actually go down in one channel so i'm 90 percent sure that there will be a beep now yeah so the tone arm's fine uh, it's within this cable somewhere um i did notice actually um when i was checking before if it was flexed at this point it was coming and going a little bit as well, so um, yeah, I think that's um, unusual for it to be there. It is very unusual because it is actually there's a underneath the deck there is actually a clamp here that stops it moving. So whether that's been dropped or something, it might be. So it's, it is a really unusual thing to happen. So let me just stop the camera because the postman has just thrown a load of things through the door. Right, so uh, having retrieved my post, um, I'm just going to. What we need to do now is just check from here to the other end and just make sure. Well, we know that this is in the arm cable, but just just to be sure that we're not not being misled by anything. So the one that we know works is the red positive, so we should get a beep through from there. Yep, and we know the right negative works, so we should get a beep. Where is it? Can I get to it there? Yeah, and um, we know that that works, so we should get a beat. And then we've got this, which should be dead. Yeah, completely dead. So what, it, what we need to do is replace that cable, which um, I may, I probably won't do actually on video because um, soldering these up is a nightmare. They're really difficult. You need a temperature controlled iron. You know, standard a standard iron is, will just um, obliterate these cables. They just, they just. Um, very easy to melt things so you, know, you need a temperature controlled iron and you need to be really careful that you don't um, don't destroy the cable because then that would be an internal wire i will do the external cables but i i tend well, i don't tend i don't do the internal wiring on on, on tone arms i think there's, there's too many pitfalls with it really you need to know what you're doing um it's yeah i, th I know people do do it but um it's, it's it's something I I, I I just I'd rather let Riga do it because they don't they, they don't charge a huge amount for rewiring a tone arm, considering, and they'll do everything they'll check the bearings or you know give the the arm a total refurb. So uh, if it's an internal issue, I would always get it always get it done by Riga. I wouldn't even think about doing it really. Um, so if you, you know if that's the case with yours, send it to me. I'll box it up and do all the right return notes for it and get it off to Riga for you. Um, but yeah, external wiring, no problem because it's just five, five connections on the bottom of here. I didn't talk about actually um, this sort of internet myth about Riga's not having an earth. There it is. That's your little earth tag. 
that's the earth wire, the black wire is the earth wire, if you can see that. Uh, and it links across, you can, might just be able to make sh see there's a bit of track that links across to the, the, ne to the negative feed from the, the cartridge. So it's earthed through the negative, you know, the actual chassis of the, the tone arm is earthed through the negative part of the, uh, the, earth, uh, the signal path. And that works far better than having a separate earth. Um, and I think I think all this with um, sort of people thinking that the earth is an issue, it's it's because that in the, the mod, in the modern world, it, there's an it's, it's very difficult for a record player nowadays. There's so many things that can cause noise. I mean, just putting putting a record player next to it and amplifier with a big transformer, you'll pick up the noise of the transformer. You have to make sure that the tone almost as, as far away as you can. Um, they'll pick up noise off. Um, routers, you know, Wi-Fi over mains, they'll pick noise up off uh, dimmable lights um, and you just have to find out what's causing it um, but if you go on a forum they'll say oh rip, rip your arm apart, put an earth cable in it because Riga didn't design it right in the first place, it hasn't got an earth but there you go, there's your earth and it works really well, it's not a problem at all so um, yeah, I'll not go into forums because they, they do make me cross to be honest so there you go, that's that. I'll, um, somewhere, in fact, I'll probably to hand, I've got replacement, re replacement um, arm lead, so um, that's what we need to wire in. You can actually fit these, this is the thicker Klotz cable type, um, you can actually fit these to the uh, earlier arms, which, if I can just see it from here, um, I should have got this beforehand, where are we? Um, oh, I've lost it. Oh, there you go. Earlier cable. That's the, that's what they uh, put on the earlier tone arm. Same same principle. But the plug. You notice know, the plug is actually pretty much the same same sort of diameter. So that's the old type, new type, kind of interchangeable with each other. Um, obviously, that doesn't look great, but it does work really well. I mean, it's, it's sort of it's just a basic basic cable really, but this is like a, a Klotz type microphone cable. Um, so that's a bit of an upgrade, if you want to put one of, that, put one of those on, or get me to put one of those on. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm not going to, like I say, I'm not going to do the soldering on this because this is a customer's tone arm and I want to concentrate on it and make sure I don't botch anything while I'm trying to film and, and solder at the same time because I'm, I'm not great on uh, multitasking. So I'll, uh, yeah, that's it. basically that's how to diagnose where the fault is and what needs to be done with it. But also, like I say, check your tags, check your cartridge before you do anything. Um, check that it's not cracked, you know, the check there's no breaks in the positives, it's usually the positive on the plugs here, check that it's not, because if, if there's a break here you can just shorten, you can just shorten the cable a little bit, um, if you can feel it there just chop it back a bit and re, re, remake up the, the plugs, um, but any further down then it's it's easy just to change the whole cable really. So yeah, um hope that was useful, I'll um, quite like doing these little repair videos really, they're very tricky to film but um, I yeah, quite enjoy doing these. Um, I mean, they don't get as many views as the as the review ones, but um, I think it's, I like having sort of useful stuff on there. Really, uh, that's going to help people. Uh, if you've got any questions, give me a call. If you want me to sort anything out for you, give me a call. Um, I'll put the address and phone number and email address at the end of end of the recording. So um, thank you very much. I'll uh, I'll see you soon.